Okay, go down to where I had uh, spoke about till now, till that uh, type 1, type 2 error mark. Okay, let's let's hold it at one slide at a time, my year. After this, after that, yeah. Just look, one, one before this, one before this. Now, this is something which you have to do when you do your literature, that you'll have to figure out what is the concept that you're working on, and you have to figure out as to what are the indicators related with that concept, and what are the variables. If you say somebody is rich, yesterday I was giving this example, like in school we used to ask each other, and you have color TV, you're a rich guy. That was a parameter. You have a you have an Apple phone, you must be a rich person there. You travel in an Audi car, you must be a rich person. So you have a parameter with which you say who's rich. Then I'm talking about the indication, I'm talking about the variables with which I measure, and what is my decision level, based on which I categorize somebody as rich. If I say someone is performing well, I think you talk about the GPA, grade point averages, semester grade point average, or cumulative grade point average, CGPA. That is what it is on a scale of 10. I mean, you tell out where it is. If it is O, A, B, C, I mean, it is 80% and above, I think you call it O, outstanding. Do you get it? And you talk about effectiveness of a health program. Let's say effectiveness of this training program. You spend five days and you say that, I can't know what is a null, what is alternate, when to apply, which tool. I think you have warmed the chairs. Or something is wrong with the guy who has spoke to you. There are only two things I would tell. Go to the next slide now. Yeah, I just want you, I told this a little while ago, please check these words, mark it out. Now, to whichever field you belong, these are the words which are permitted when it comes with, there are one more set, I think, there, what are permitted for objectives. In a words like to examine, to analyze, to determine, to explore, to evaluate, to assess. Uh, you want ACO? What happened? Give it. You want to lower it? It's it's very cold? I don't know. I think it's not very cold. You change your place if that's the case there. <laughs> then we talk about to explore, to evaluate, to assess, to estimate, to identify, to accomplish, to establish. Now look at the next slide, Ma. Now these are the words which I often find, and this is not permitted. I often find these. These are personal queries and not meant for research. To find. OK, you found. What is it for me? You study, right? It's for your sake, for your knowledge. How does it, that knowledge disseminate to the rest of the world? Words like, to understand. OK, you have to understand. OK, what do I I'm talking about how do you actually put it across to others? And words like, to know, to explain. And this is something which I find students keep making. One of the objectives to suggest never it can be an objective. Because suggestions are an outcome of your research. Because your last chapter is ultimately going to be conclusions, findings, and uh, suggestions and recommendations. So it's not your purpose to study what is called as to suggest. And your object has got to be crisp, short sentences, and not paragraphs. And it usually begins with a prefix called to. Can I go to the previous slide, Ma? Up arrow key. I said to examine, to analyze. Can you get those words? The permissible words. Next slide, Ma. Now, next again. Now, look at it. What does it mean, or what are the implications of the word to examine? What does it mean when I say to analyze? I'm trying to figure out the cause and effect relationship. When I use a word to establish, I'm talking about is there a relationship or not? Do you get that? Now, the next thing, I mean, he says use action words when you work out your objectives. Can we go to the next one? Now, this is a slide which tells you whether you really require hypothesis or not. Now, if your objective is clear, it doesn't have any gaps, it's complete. It is not general, it is very specific. With these three characteristics, you'll go for what? descriptive study. If it is clear, it is complete, it is specific, and you're able to identify the main variables for which you have to find a correlation, then you will take up correlation studies with the nature of experimental and non-experimental. But if it is clear, complete, specific, and you're able to identify the variables, and then you seek to identify the direction of the relationship, 
the strength of the relationship, then you use what? Hypothesis. So to all the students who ask, is hypothesis a must? My plain answer is no. But you want to figure out the direction of the relationship? Yes. You need a, I mean, you need a hypothesis study for that. So bear this in mind, whether you're going to use hypothesis or not. Next slide, Mark. I think you can run these slides. I think these I've done it already. Yeah. Further, further. More. When I asked you to put a later one, this I've done. Yeah, I just had this in my mind to tell this is not. Please have a look. You know, I mean, Ma, one second you go to the earlier one and come back. Yeah, just have a look at this. And the explanation for it is what I'm trying to give it by taking a legal example in the next slide. It's a three-dimensional kind of a thing. Yeah. Now you look at it. I said the hypothesis is true and you accept. What is that called? Correct decision. The hypothesis is true but you reject. What are you calling it? Type 1 error. And you are indicating with a Greek symbol alpha. And that is what you call it as the level of significance. The hypothesis false but your decision is to accept. What are you calling it as? Type 2 error and the symbol is beta. The hypothesis is false and the decision is to reject. What do you call it? Correct decision. This is 1 minus beta and this is 1 minus alpha. Expand it a little further and look at it. What is happening to somebody who is caught? Okay? Now, a person is innocent and is not found guilty. Whatever evidences that were put against him went false. A person is innocent but unjustly convicted. Now look at the next one. Guilty but unjustly acquitted. He should be behind bars but you are acquitting him. Look at the next one. Guilty and convicted. This is good. You know, if somebody is from law, we say that if 10 guilty people are left scot-free, it's okay. But one innocent person should not be convicted. And that is what you'll have to try for. And when it comes for paper valuation, I'll tell you what I learned from one of my seniors. You are there to appreciate the one who has written very well. In the group, there may be many who will go who end up getting pass marks. But you'll have to put efforts in differentiating the one who really worked hard. But along with the ones who didn't do well, you push the person also who didn't well. That is injustice. Do you get this? Then? Somebody gets into paper valuation. Next one, ma. Now, I said, what is type 1? What is type 2? By now, I think. So when you say your alpha is 5%, which means the decision you take has got a chance or a probability of 5% error and 95% no type 1 error. When I say alpha is 1%, my say level of significance, I say chances of committing a type 1 error is 1%. Not committing a type 1 error is 99%. Next slide. Now, these are some of the tests that are there. And uh, the tool, we call it as the statistic. Let me make it very clear. If the nature of the data is parametric, I beg your pardon. If the nature of the data is normal, that is, you are able to give a normal distribution pattern. Then if the size is 30 or more, we call it the Z test. If it is normal and the size is between 1 to 29, we call it the small sample test. And that is where we call it the T test. Is that clear? But if it doesn't exhibit the normality conditions, then the kind of tools we use is called non-parametric. Maybe you get a chi-square. But ANOVA also is a parametric test. Let's, let's look at the next slide. Now, this is what I am here for, for telling you when do you use which. Maybe I have a few more slides to relate with what I did yesterday. I mean, what I'm talking about is two things. One is based on the nature of your objectives. The second thing is based on the nature of your data. How do you choose which tool of analysis to apply? Murthy, sir, or maybe Aditya after me, will continue into correlation regression or the session tomorrow, straight it will be demos on these tools. Look at this. Uh, let me tell you what is, uh, where did I put my marker? Marker is here? No. 
I have it here. Thank you. Now, first, let me distinguish this word, and then you can get into the other things. Now, look at this thing. I have a population. From that, I take a small part, which is a sample. OK? I know all the parent population characteristics. Mean, standard deviation, size, proportion, everything I know. On such a sample, if I work out statistical tools, I call it as parametric test. I have a sample, but I don't know to which parent population it belongs. I have no clue, no idea. I'm totally ignorant about the sample size, the standard deviation, the proportion, mean, everything. I don't know anything about the parent population. On such a sample, if I work out statistical techniques, I call it the non-parametric test. Is that clear? Get that first thing. What is parametric and what is non-parametric? When I know parent population characteristics, and on such a sample, if I apply statistical tools, parametric. No idea about the parent population characteristics. On such a sample, I apply the statistical tools. I call it non-parametric. So along the parametric, there are two tests that are there. One is called as one sample test. Another is called, you have two samples simultaneously. See, if it is one sample, then it could be I'm trying to check between a x bar and a mu. If there are two samples, maybe I'm trying to check between an x1 and x2. Or it could be between mu1 and mu2 